Hi, this is Ron Nutter, and this is another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. And this time I'm going to show you how to get an Amazon Fire Stick up and running as a part of the Traveling Smart Home series that we've been doing for the past few videos. And that starts now. Before getting too far down the path, I just want to thank all those that have been subscribing to the channel and leaving me comments, giving me ideas for other videos. That, that really is appreciated, folks, because I want to make sure that I'm doing something that's going to help you as much as it can. Now, there are two different streaming receivers that we can use. And one of the two is the Amazon Fire Stick. Now, I've got a case, and I found this on Amazon. This does not come with it, but Amazon, if you're listening, you might want to think about bundling it because it's really a good idea. Let me drop the graphic here for just a little bit. Now, in here, we've got the, the Fire Stick, the remote, the power supply that you may need, and we'll show that here in just a minute. Then over here, we've got the cable that you go from the Fire Stick to the back of the TV if it's a supported TV with USB. That's, again, we're going to talk about here in just a minute. I always keep the batteries separate when, when I'm not using it because the last thing you would find if you're sitting for several weeks or maybe several months that your batteries have leaked and probably have damaged the remote control because you really don't want to go try to buy another remote control. It may be cheaper just to go buy another fire stick. Now, the other adapter you're seeing here, this is one that does not come with the fire to be, but I strongly encourage you to get it. And here's why. Sometimes in hotel situations, you may not be able to attach this directly to the hotel network because they use something called a captive portal. And that's a fancy way of saying that you have to enter your room number or some credentials the front desk may give you. So that makes the fire stick almost unusable at the point. And that's where if you hook this via a hard ethernet cable into the AR750, and then you have your laptop plugged into the 750, then you can authenticate to the firewall at the hotel, and then the fire stick should work just fine. But either way, this is a nice little case. It's about 10 bucks, and that's the link to this is in the video description. And that really, you can't make it much simpler than that. I edited the video down because I really didn't want to have you watching sometimes several minutes of almost nothing going on. So let's switch over to the video. And the first thing you see up on the screen, this appeared shortly after I turned the TV on. This is a good indication that the TV you're trying to use the Fire Stick with, if you've got the USB cable plugged into the back of the TV, because most TVs will have one. Ideally, it's for uh, streaming video. I mean, it's, it's ideally, it's like if you plugged a, a USB stick in that had maybe a video file or something on it. Sometimes they're used just for service applications. Uh, which I didn't know anybody serviced flat screens. So this may tell you you may have a problem, but let's go ahead and and go on here, and I'm going to shift to another screen. So we'll go ahead and move the video forward, and you're going to see it as the Fire Stick starts to boot up. And I apologize for the, the quality of this video. I found a better way to do it, but unfortunately the parts won't be here the next time. And this is what you'll see first up. It's trying to pair with the remote. So what you'll want to do is go ahead and get the batteries in the remote. They're you know, just a little clamshell piece. You come off the back of the remote, put them in, and then you'll tap the button it shows you there on the screen to get started. And it should pair fairly quick. And then you'll see the logo change where it says press the play button to start. And now this is where you will start, you know, you check, you uh, we'll select your language. Now, this is the message that will confirm that you do have a problem with the uh, onboard USB port. So that's when you're going to have to use the, and we'll switch back over here. You're going to have to use this little power adapter instead of plugging into the back of the TV. But, you know, there could be worse things to happen. So that's that's not a problem. And then we'll get back to the video here. So what I had to do at that point is just turn off the TV and then I've restarted the installation process, reselected the language. Now it's scanning for networks. Now this is assuming a wireless situation and I'm going to pick, you know, if you're using this at home, if you can put it on a five gigahertz based SSID, you'll have, I think, better throughput. I've done it with 2.4 and it was 
problematic. Now, this is where you'll enter the password for the SSID you're using. And in a hotel situation, this may be a problem. You may not be able to, to get the password. Of course, most of the hotels, not most, some hotels I've been seeing are using open wireless, so there is no password, but you hit what's called a firewall garden and that's basically it's a, it's a web portal that you have to give it something that identifies who you are so they can track it mainly by mac address the device that's on the network so that's going to be a challenge for this wireless stick because that's it doesn't have enough uh not intelligence but it doesn't have enough chutzpah in it to to you'll get past it and that's where if you plug this into the AR750, and this is where the little adapter, I'm going to pull it out now. You see it's got an RJ45 and a, a mini USB port. So what you'll do is you'll take this end of the cable, and it goes right in there. And it only goes in one way, and if you have to force it, then you're, you're putting it in the wrong way. So it just goes in very neatly like that. Then you can plug in the other power cable to here and at that point, you're probably going to have to run it off of uh, the power supply that comes with it. And then the RJ45 port is where you'll put the cable that goes to the AR750 or whatever firewall that you're using. But at least that gives you an option to use it on a wired situation and gives you a little more control over what's going on. So we'll go on past this. And, you know, at this point, I've entered the password. It's connecting to the SSID on my network. Then... Once it's gotten authenticated, then it's getting in, getting its IP address. For those of you who are, who are IT people, you you know this, so I, I apologize, but there's some people that are going through this for the first time that have, may not have dealt with this that much. So after it gets firmly connected to the network, it's going to ID itself. Now, this is going a little quicker, but for two things, I did edit some of this down to cut some of the delay out, but also I happen to have Google Fiber, so things generally go fairly quick for the most part. The beauty of the Fire Stick, you don't have as much setup to do as you would with a Roku. And I mean, I love Rokus, don't get me wrong. I use both the Fire and the Roku. But with Amazon, they ship this to you. It's already registered to your Amazon account. So a lot of what you would have to do about authorizing and authenticating it has already been done before you even get it. So that's it's one less hassle. So you could change to a different account. I'm not because you know, I've got Amazon Prime. So that's the reason that... I'm going to continue on and you have the option of saving or not saving passwords. Again, that's personal preference. Uh, I normally don't, but if you have a password at home that is kind of long, you really don't want to uh, enter it all the time because you saw the password screen where you entered it before. That's personal preference. I'm not going to say one way or the other. I typically don't, but I can see reasons for, for doing so. So, you know, at this point, I just told it yes. But as you see on the screen, you can change that. And then you have the option of turning on or pen or controls or not. I said I don't need it. It's checking the network speed. If there was going to be a problem, it would tell you at that point. Now, at this point, this is a little tutorial that you, I just skipped through. You just went, uh, tipped on the tapped on the right, right, right arrow, and that really was was it. So it's very straightforward, and this is an ideal companion with this whole little box of stuff in here to, to have on the road with you. So you have an option of something more than just the TV channels in the hotel. You, you, I did mention earlier about the batteries. I have been burned on more than one occasion by leaving batteries in. And, you know, you can always put them in a separate little mini baggie, wrap it in cellophane, something, so they don't bounce around and not knowing what the TSA regulations may change. If you're, as long as you don't have the batteries where they can make contact with each other, you know, they should be happy. I would suggest having a separate set, a, get it out here a minute, a separate set of batteries with you. Because depending on how long you've had these batteries, you may suddenly find the remote becomes non-responsive. Although, let me show you a little trick with this. And this is not something that everybody may have heard before. With the battery chamber in the back, flip the battery position. So the battery that was here now goes in this slot and vice versa. You won't get a lot of time out of it, but you may just be able to get through that day or maybe even a few days. So if you 
forgot to pack the extra set of batteries, that's an option to keep using this because you may not be using the remote that much. One of the reasons I did go with the Fire TV is because there is a, a form of Alexa, not full form, but a form in here. So I can do, I've got the option in switching between the different programs or movies or channels that I have installed. I can either do it with this little wheel device here, which is just kind of like a joystick, or I can press the button and talk to Alexa and have it do it. So there, that's one of the reasons I did it because we're, you'll see me talk later on in another video where we get into voice control. And this, this at least is one less thing that you have to carry where depending on which way you go, you'd be looking at either an Echo Dot or the Google Home Mini or having to use your cell phone as the voice remote. So I'm just, I'm trying to travel as, as lightly as we can. Well, that's about all for this video. Thank you everybody for watching. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, I would really appreciate it if you could. That helps me so that as my numbers come up, then that helps me attract companies who are willing to, you know, possibly help sponsor one or more of the videos or provide products that I can use to show you. If you, anything you buy, and I've got affiliate links to everything you saw here, both the, the Ethernet adapter, the Fire TV stick, the case, if you buy any of that, I will get into affiliate commission. That's not going to change your price. I do appreciate that it does help to go with offsetting the costs of doing these videos and things that, that I buy. And I am trying to upgrade the gear, which is another thing I want to mention. If you're not at a point where you're buying things, certainly understand that one. I'm also set up on Patreon. So you, you can become a patron of the Tech Bytes RN channel for as little as a dollar a month. And I'm doing two to three videos a week. So even at just two videos, that's an average of eight videos a month. So that's what, about 15 cents roughly. I keep saying I'll do the math and I never do. But that's another way where you can help me. And I would really appreciate that. And I've got, I'm working on a series of, uh, they use the term rewards. I don't like doing it, but things that I will do for you in return for becoming a patron. So as the channel grows, as I get people on Patreon, there's things that I'm looking because I'm already starting, uh, and we talked about, let me bring up the graphic for the book. Uh, I will be, at the time I'm recording this, which is uh, over a holiday weekend, I'm already doing the final touches on the book. This should be out the, I'm hoping, middle to end of June, and I'm already starting to work on volume two. I, when I went into this, I didn't know this would be a multi-volume set, but with the way technology is changing so much, that and they're making additions to this all the time that i can see this being an ongoing series i'm going to be continuing to do videos the different videos that you see me do so far will be linked to from the book so as you get to something you'll have the step by steps and then if you want to go watch the video to see what i'm walking through so i'm just trying to make this as a valuable resource as i can for you and if you would like to uh help me out on Patreon. There's the link right there. And we just take that one you know, step at a time, whatever you can do. And if nothing else, being a supporter that I really appreciate that because having the comments I've gotten so far, because mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm not getting paid to do this, but I want to help you all get some of the same enjoyment that I can out of this. So here's the direct link to the channel. Please subscribe to it. If you want to go ahead and click the little bell icon, that will uh, get you notified, or should. I've been hearing some reports where it doesn't always happen, of getting notified as new videos come out. I've got a whole slew of videos, and I I told you I was running between 150 to 200. I've already got planned out. Well, I think it's safe to say that number is going to be growing because I'm already planning for the next book. And I'm going to put a little teaser out here now. We've talked about Amazon Alexa. We've talked about the Google Home Mini. And we've, we're, we're going to touch a little bit on Apple HomeKit. The challenge I've had with Apple HomeKit is getting things to work without an iPhone. And that's been, not, not everybody's going to have an iPhone. I found a Internet of Things gateway, very easy to set up. It's from the Mozilla Foundation that has support. And I'll be testing that hopefully here within the next few weeks. So, Thank you for your time. Really appreciate you stopping by the channel and watching these videos. And we'll see you again.